Hello, and welcome to The Bright Side, the show where we shed light on the people, places, and stories that make Michigan great. I'm Anisha Freeman, the host for today. I'm coming to you from Grand Rapids, the home of the Grand Rapids Medical Mile, an area in the city bustling with medical facilities, colleges, and health research. In today's episode, we'll find out about being healthy in Michigan, not just physical health, but psychological, nutritional, and spiritual health too. In our first video, we will see how much the way you think affects your health and your life. We'll meet people who are seriously turning their lives around with a cognitive restructuring and re-socialization program I call The Lies That Bind, The Legacy of the Locks. My life was a mess. I kept doing some of the same things over and over again. For a long time, I just thought I wouldn't be anybody. I wouldn't be anybody but, um, you know, a welfare recipient or, um, you know, a single mom struggling by herself. And there was a period of time when my own children had went through the foster care system, you know, due to my active addiction and being able to fight the system from the other side and, and win the cases to bring my children back home were really awesome. Oh. Life has meaning now. I can stand up for myself, and that is just so significant. And it's just so awesome that now I am the system. <laughs> and I can help other women, you know, who have gone through that experience to know that, yes, your kids can come home. No, the system is not where you want to be. You just have to believe in yourself. It's really changed my life, and I've watched it change the lives of lots and lots of women who've gone through the program. The Lies That Bind is a cognitive restructuring and resocialization program based on the findings of several experts in the fields of neuroscience and psychology. And what these experts say is that everything you're doing as an adult, whether it's positive or negative, can be traced to an unconscious belief system that was developed during the formative years. I introduce people to their unconscious belief system. So what I do is I sit down with my clients and I do a formative years assessment where I talk to them for a couple of hours about their childhood and once I have this information, I go back and I code their unconscious belief system. I give them their belief system on four by seven laminated index cards. I utilize the cards well. Um, I take them, I read the lie first of all and I turn them over on the back, and on the back has the truth. It kind of unplugs me. It gives me a feeling of comfort, knowing um, that this is just a feeling, it's just a belief, and that I can change that belief. I don't have to believe that anymore. I don't have to live that lie. That's basically the way we get through the stressful times. You just read the card. <laughs> a lot of people have said, Anisha, why the lies that bind? That's a negative connotation, but I, I and I, and I challenge myself, I say, yeah, Anisha, but primarily, even though I introduce people to the truth, there's truth everywhere in society. There are so many programs that teach the truth, that present the truth, but there's, a lot, there's not a lot of programs that expose the lies that are keeping people from internalizing the truth. So we can have a lot of programs on budgeting and, and home ownership and how to eat right and exercise, but if you don't, uh, but there are some things people have to unlearn. So, so if I don't unlearn that I have to assume the responsibilities of others, you can give me all of the budget training classes that you want, but my issues make my budget. So my issues and my budget is already made out. I'm gonna go assume other people's financial responsibilities. I'm gonna pay people to act like they like me. That's an unconscious budget and it's already solidified into my right brain. So if you don't help me restructure my thought process, even though you're giving me good information, it's hard for me to apply it. So my mission, my assignment on this earth is to expose the lies that bind people to negative relationships, to bad decisions. And so once I expose the lie, then they are, they're more able to internalize the truth that is everywhere in society. So I've been out of relationships now for over three years, and I am just loving me. <laughs> in fact, um, I'm finishing up an associate's over at Cornerstone, and I'm um, into another uh, university working on my BSW at Spring Arbor. And so today is my first day, actually, at my second university. There's a lot of people, a lot of people change their lives, but I, I, I have yet to see the, the level of freedom that I have and that these women have that's been in my program 
just, I haven't seen it anywhere. Maybe it's out there, I just haven't seen it. If the truth will set you free, it must be a lie that has you bound. That's implied theology. If you, you know, you shall know the truth, and we've heard that a thousand times, and the truth will set you free. Well, the truth will set you free, it must be a lie that has you bound. Some people have been unconsciously programmed to believe that they are not important, or that their health is not important, or that they are not entitled to the same rights, opportunities, and privileges as others. In the next segment, we will go to Central Michigan, where the Ingram Health Plan is challenging those negative beliefs by providing affordable health care to Ingram County residents who would otherwise have no access to basic medical health services. Thanks to IHP, um, during the couple years that I didn't have insurance, I was able to get my normal checkups, and um, that was really, really nice knowing that I at least had that to fall back on. The value of the plan for the people who are uninsured is they can have access to medical care, uh, a basic wellness benefit. For others, economically, it can be very beneficial if you have a small employer that can't afford to offer insurance, that somebody can have a wellness benefit and if somebody is well, they come to work and they work. If they're not well, you get higher absenteeism. And so we like to think that we add economically to the community as well by keeping people healthy. Hello, my name is Monique Gotch. Uh, I live in the Lansing area. Free medical care clinic got me signed up for a and Health. I had it for about a year and it worked out uh, really well. It took care of my needs um, and then I went on my own in my own business and uh, then I could afford my own health care on my own. So I went off and uh, I'm grateful for it. So I applaud uh, Ingham County for actually having a program like this and I hope that other people can benefit. If it wasn't for IHP, I would have gone five, six years with zero health care. And that would have been really rough. Without the health plan, um, the, one, the one inhaler that my doctor wanted me on was $120 and, uh, for, for a month. And it's not happening. <laughs> um, but yeah, through, through IHP, I was able to get generic version and it was five bucks a month. We are the major provider of services for IHP, so they constitute a, a, a large percentage of our patient population. All of healthcare is challenging for all of us, and if we all do small parts of it, it'll, it'll even out the burden for all of us. If you'd like to consider being an IHP provider uh, for primary care or specialty care, you can contact uh, me at the IHP office. You can take your existing patients that perhaps don't have any insurance and they can sign up for IHP and that is a way you can take IHP. The other ability is we can limit the number of people who are assigned to your practice. So if you want to take five a month, if you want to take two a month, we can limit that amount of exposure. The couple times that I've had to move counties, um, I've always been like, they have something like this. Another negative unconscious belief is that exercise is not important. It's too much work. When in actuality, exercise is not as hard as being unhealthy. Let's go to Flint where the Krim Fitness Foundation is helping people become physically active and fit. The Krim Festival and Race draws thousands of people each year to the city of Flint. There are people that come in from all over the state, all over the country, all over the world to run this race in Flint, Michigan every year the fourth Saturday in August. It's amazing. 
And the neat thing about it, and it's the way it started, is that it's not just for elite runners. Crim training. Crim training. Mm -hmm. And we run together, we train together. And I tell people that are asking about the crim and, oh, I don't think I can do it. And I'm, don't worry about it, they'll train you. And these people get together under volunteer group leaders of groups of about 20 each at different paces, and then they go out and they run. We have to run a mile to see which group we go into. And we actually uh, ran each other while we were doing that one mile run. And we intentionally sandbagged and ran real slowly so we'd be put into a beginner's group. Yeah. <laughs> and somehow we went to the meeting and we ended up in Bill's group. And we were told you were the toughest leader of all. <laughs> and that proved to be true. <laughs> I actually started running because somebody told me I, I couldn't do it. And I said, oh really? Okay, we'll see. And last August I did 10 miles. First year, first year running ever. So. was a shirt that Mark put together for our running group. So how many were in our group, do you think? We were about 20, 25. The blue line. It's called the blue line. There is an actual four inch blue line that is painted the entire length of the course. And if you live on the blue line, that's a pretty cool thing. Uh, and the city has supported this race like no other place I have ever been. I think it's very crowded, so we're going to do something that's called wave starts, which is where you start people in increments, so it kind of spreads people out as they're running, it's less crowded. And then we're going to give all the participants a, a really cool technical running shirt. So it's the kind of wick away shirt that they, that they can actually run in rather than a cotton t-shirt. I, I think they'll really, really like that. We had a lot of fun in training because the guys would say, all right, who's, who's run the farthest they've ever run in their life? And we'd go, right here. <laughs> we keep using the word fun, how much fun we had with the program, how much fun we have running, enjoy it. And for people in your audience who've never ran before, they're going to be puzzled. And they have to do it to experience it, which is something you have to do. And you can do it. And you can do I it. I didn't think I could. Yeah. The program is phenomenal. And it all culminates on race day. The electricity is in the air. You get there, you just, I don't care what the weather is like or how well you can train, you get down in there and that mass of people, it's just an amazing, amazing feeling. I think it's uh, Flint's finest hour. Uh, the whole community comes out to, to support the runners. And, uh, there's just so much energy in the air. And then when they finish it, and they got all these people that they finish it, cheering for them, get something, get something to see. And it's in Flint, Michigan. I just love that piece of the story because so many people hear the wrong messages about Flint, Michigan. And we have our challenges. I'm not saying we don't, but they don't hear the positives. And there is truly a commitment to health and community here that I've experienced no place else, not like Flint. Another negative unconscious belief that some people have been programmed to believe is what they eat is not important as long as it tastes good. When the truth of the matter is that what one eats is very important. Now let's head to Lansing for the third annual Everybody Eats Conference, where that belief is being challenged where people are being taught the importance of growing food, eating healthy, and engaging kids in good nutrition. Well, everybody eats, so it's kind of a common denominator. We're all impacted by the food system, and so we have the opportunity for people from all segments of society to work together for the mutual benefit. And so that's one of, the, one of the, the, the good things about being involved in food system reform, that it kind of cuts across all the typical boundaries. It's for everyone. This, this event is for everyone to come to and learn about. You, even if you're just an eater of food and you don't grow anything and you don't have a school garden or you're not doing an incubator farm, it's still something that you could come and learn about your food system and be close to the people that, that grow your food. It's something that um, I guess I didn't really have in like growing up. 
It was kind of just like, you know, we buy this food and we eat it. Um, but seeing, you know, meeting people who actually are growing your food is, is just really exciting. And like, I'm not a farmer, but I still think growing food is really cool. We could simply just go into classrooms and say, here, here's a healthy food sample. And, and kids will be like, ooh, I don't like spinach. And they just won't want nothing to do with it. So um, we found if they grow the spinach seed, um, water the spinach, harvest the spinach, and then prepare the food as well, then they're all excited about it and they're more willing to try it. So we found that gardening is the, the best way to get through to kids rather than just handing them something and then them having the choice to say yes or no they're a lot more likely to say yes if they're the ones that made it themselves. But one of the things that people can do is gardening, even if it's on a small level, doing small container gardens, and just introducing new foods into the diet, fresh, healthy foods, as opposed to just eating fast foods or packaged foods or frozen foods. There's ways to slowly begin to change your diet. But again, the main thing is once your thinking changes, you know, your, your outer reality also begins to change. One hour of gardening is like walking two miles. It's the equivalent of just standard gardening. And then if you're doing heavier gardening, like shoveling, then it's a, a much higher um, steps per minute ratio. Um, so there's a lot of physical activity. But this conference, I think, is a symbol of many, many people working for many years because they, they get it that food is so important to our communities and um, building places people want to live. In Michigan, yoga is becoming a popular way to not only stay physically active, but to clear the mind and be spiritually healthy. The Just Be Yoga Studio in Real Town Lansing is a donation-based yoga studio, keeping yoga affordable for everyone in the community. LLC right here in the heart of Rio Town. We are Lansing's only donation-based yoga studio um, and so we're just all about community. We're about giving back to the community and offering holistic arts to the entire community. So it doesn't matter how much money you have, it doesn't matter whether you're flexible, it doesn't matter um, you know, whether or not you know anything about yoga or tai chi at all. Just get up, come give it a try, meet your neighbors and have some fun. We thought we'd try a new, a new type of yoga. We've never done hip hop yoga. It's pretty cool. This is our first time, and we'll be back. It was great. We I really liked it liked a lot. It. Yeah, I like having music during it. Yeah, that was some really good '90s mix. <laughs> Today is Community Free Yoga Night. This is where it all began. We actually started a weekly free yoga class on Wednesdays, and that was almost two years ago now. Actually, in April, it will be two years that we started this class, and it was first at the Shabazz Academy. Um, we used their gymnasium, and then within about eight months, we were able to get this space, and we moved everything over here. get in touch with what's going on for you besides the body. I think that we get all wrapped up in posture and, you know, can I get my heel behind my head? You know, that was never intended to be there, so don't worry, you don't have to get it there. Yoga means to create a union or create a connection. And so if we can do that by being together, you've created a connection. If you can actually do that by finding a pose and find a better peace of mind, um, Maybe you start to problem solve and figure out a new route or a new path for yourselves in your lives.
yoga offers so much for you, mind, body, and spirit, and, uh, and for community as well. Can you imagine, I mean, turning a cigar factory into a wellness center? So now we're sitting in what is, uh, is a former Albert Kahn designed cigar factory uh, that had lived its use. And then it was a furniture warehouse for many, many years. And that had lived its use. We've turned this into a wellness center. It's a place where there's different tenants, where there's a primary care that has uh, medical primary care as well as dental. Um, this year they're going to see um, over 10,000 uh, visits just here in this center alone. Then there's early childhood development, you know, kind of zero to three, an emphasis on child care and early childhood services. Then there's a, a WIC program, which serves 3,000 moms and their babies, starting from pregnancy and then into the early development. And then there's mental health counseling and youth development counseling, all, if you will, within a wellness center. So today it's a wellness center, tomorrow it'll be a wellness campus because all of wellness can't fit within this building and there's other people who want to add on projects. So you get nutrition, you get walking, you get cooking, you get chiropractor, you get yoga, you get meditation, all that we take for, uh, for granted. Bringing that into a, uh, a working, a lower class community so that we can bring wellness back into their lives. When you look at, at, at developmental stages of, of children, okay, uh, going into, uh, through their youth and whatever, the impact of nutrition, the impact of, of, uh, of, of exercise, the impact of having uh, a primary care doctor with you and with the family throughout um, it all. It's so important. How are we going to get a head start in all of the other developmental, in, in our uh, in our education, okay, and in our financial well-being, if our health is challenged. So wellness is at the key of, um, um, of, of a lot of development work. You know, that idea from a cigar factory to a wellness center, um, right in the midst of, of a neighborhood, um, it's, it's great. And we're helping turn Detroit back into a city of opportunity. There are many ways Michigan is changing to become a healthier state through physical activity, nutrition, psychology, and peace of mind. Thank you for joining me, Anisha Freeman, on The Bright Side. If you would like to find out more information about any of the programs on today's show, submit ideals for the next show, or watch this episode again, visit brightsidetv.com. But I, I think they need to show you how they really trained us. <laughs> of course, it was so hot, we didn't mind a bit. <laughs> so you want the, the history and kind yeah. of how we got here? I don't know how much time you got because I can talk a lot about this guy. <laughs> it just happens that our my computer programming final was a two-week take home, open book, open note, good luck final that cured me of my desire to be a computer programmer. The Crim Festival, draw and okay, start over. Why, were you ever the slowest runner? Never. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the guy always circling guy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a great guy, you are. Even she's laughing at that. <laughs> I was on cops. Uh, no. <laughs> you looked at me like, is she serious? For me, I met lots of great people. And I'm not just saying these three, but I met lots of great people. There's no. What about me? <laughs>